This is a raw bar that I got from the Real Oyster Cult, and I'm gonna try all these ingredients on an oyster in different combinations, and it's gonna be about 11 different combinations that I'm gonna try out. So let's go ahead and get started with the first combination I'm gonna do. Now the first one's actually gonna be pretty simple. It's just gonna be a straight up raw oyster. Now this oyster is actually a Wellfleet oyster from Massachusetts, and I find it easier to shuck oysters from the hinge. I know a lot of people in the comments tell me that I should be bill shucking, which is like shucking it from the front, but I find the hinge so much easier to shuck. It may not be the prettiest job you've ever seen when it comes to shucking an oyster, but it opens the oyster, I can get to the meat really easy, and it gets it done. Now right away when I shucked this oyster, I could see it was a beautiful plump oyster, and I was really excited to try this one because Wellfleets are some of my favorite oysters that there are out there. Now it's time for the first taste test, and look, these are just delicious oysters. These Wellfleet oysters have a good amount of salt, some That's sweetness, so good. and mommy too. They're just so fresh and clean with a little bit of brine too. Like, it is such a good oyster. Now for the first few oysters, I'm gonna keep it pretty simple and just do one ingredient on each oyster. And I'm gonna stay with the Wellfleet oysters for most of this taste test. Now one of the most popular things to put on oysters is a mignonette sauce. And if you've never heard of a mignonette sauce, it's basically like chopped up shallots, some black pepper, and then your choice of vinegar. A lot of people use like champagne vinegar or even like raspberry vinegar or something like that. The real oyster cult, honestly, I'm not sure what they put in their mignonette. I can definitely tell there's a good base of shallots and there's a good base of black pepper as well. Now I went ahead, got this thing ready, shook up the mignonette sauce because you want those chunks to come out of there too. The little pieces of shallots are absolutely delicious and put a little bit on there. Like if you like a good vinegar sauce on your oysters, then this is definitely something that you're gonna wanna try it when you try it. You can taste oysters. the shallots and the vinegar too. It's a good combination. It's not my favorite, but it's a good one. The next combination I'm going to try is a haze mignonette. I've never heard of this before. And what it basically looks like, it looks like it's horseradish, some vinegar, and some ginger as well. Now, I'm not going to lie. I didn't think I was going to like this combination. The combination of horseradish and vinegar and ginger all together just didn't sound like something that was going to really sit well with me, especially on an oyster. But I was definitely willing to give it a try. Now, this oyster shell actually broke in half as I was shucking it. And you can barely see it there, but there is actually words imprinted on the shell. Now, if this happens to you and the shell breaks in half, just carefully get the other half off with your knife. Cut the adductor muscle there. And you should be able to salvage the oyster despite messing up the shell. Now, go ahead, cut that adductor muscle muscle on the bottom there and get it ready to slurp down. Now you don't want to add too much of the mignonette sauce because it can overpower the taste of the oyster. So I just put a little bit of a drop there, gave this a taste and it definitely exceeded my expectations. I don't know what I was thinking the combination would taste like, but it was surprisingly good. That's really good. The horseradish and the ginger pair super well together. That, be, that may be my favorite sauce I've tried from the real oyster called. That's really good. Next up, I decided to go away from the sauces and started adding other things on top of these oysters. And what I'm gonna add on at this time is gonna be a crab claw. Now the crab claw I have are Jonah crab claws and I've had them before and I like them, but I don't like them nearly as much as blue crab claws. I think I'm gonna have to redo this with some blue crab claws, maybe do some grilled oysters as well because I feel like the sweetness of a crab and the saltiness and the umami of an oyster are gonna go really well together. But these Jonah crab claws are ones that even the ones just from Real Oyster Cult, they're just not my favorite kind of crab claw. But I'm gonna do this anyways because I'm curious to see what it's gonna taste like. I put about a whole claw meat on there, went ahead, gave this thing a taste, and what I expected. Like the crab was sweet, a little bit dry, but sweet. It had the umami of the oyster, some brine too. Like it was a good combination, but I do think it'd be better with some blue crabs if you want my opinion. Next up, I'm gonna go ahead and put smoked salmon on an oyster. Now this oyster was one that's difficult to open. If you can see, its hinge is actually downward facing. And I find it easier when you get an oyster like this to just go ahead and actually turn it upside down to shuck it. Once you get it like popped open, you can easily shuck the shell this way. So that's what I normally do when I get those upside down turned you know hinges of the oyster and it makes it a lot easier to get them open now there may be other ways to do this other than shucking from the hinge maybe bill shucking is better for this kind of oyster this method seems to work for me now i put some smoked salmon on this and in hindsight i put way too much i should have put like little diced up pieces on there because the smoked salmon definitely overpowered the oyster you couldn't taste the oyster anymore all you could taste were the smoked salmon and i want both of those flavors to be present not just the smoked salmon to overpower the next oyster i grabbed had some trouble now if you're looking at this oyster right now you can see the oyster is starting to flake and break. When this happens, you can either give up and kind of throw out this oyster, or you can figure out a different way to shuck it. So basically what I had to do here is just piece it together. What I decided to do is go ahead and flip this one upside down and shuck the oyster so the oyster actually stays on the top of the shell. Now, even with that kind of idea, 
It was a total mess because this oyster shell was so flaky, but I went ahead and grabbed my next ingredient, which is going to be the salmon pate, and put it on there. Now, I like a good cream cheese kind of based thing on my oyster, and this was no exception. This one had jalapeno and smoked salmon and the cream cheese. This was a really good combination, and I'm excited to try some different stuff with it. Now, the next combination is one that a lot of people recommended that I try, but first, I had to get this oyster open, and I'm having the same problems I did with the other oyster. If you look there, the hinge is almost like disintegrating as I shock it. Now, that can be due to a lot of reasons, including like disease of the oyster itself or just the oyster growing too fast, but if it happens, you just got to find a way to get in there. Now, I absolutely butchered this oyster, but I'm still going to put some caviar on it, and I'm going to give this a try. There's no point of wasting an oyster because it's a little bit mangled, so I Went ahead put that caviar on there gave it a try and this is actually a good combination i do like smoked trout roe better than caviar but this is a good one and i think some of the combinations i'm going to do with it are going to make it taste even better now the next combinations are basically going to be like when you're a kid and you went to the soda machine and you mixed up like coke sprite and all that kind of stuff and just put all the different sodas they had on the oyster i'm going to do that for the next few oysters so First, I got to shuck this oyster, and I'm having the same problems again. This time, I was able to open it from the, sh the hinge, but the shell actually broke in half. Now, I can deal with this. This is a lot easier than the shell actually crumbling. You just got to take your time, take the top half off that broke, and then just go ahead and use your knife, pry that one up, and cut the adductor muscle, and you're good to go. So for this combination, I'm going to go ahead and put some salmon on there. And this time, instead of putting a whole piece of salmon on there, I'm going to put like little strips of salmon on there to not overpower it. Next, I want to put some caviar on top of that. Not too much to overpower it again, just so you can taste the caviar. And then some of that salmon pate. This is really similar to one that I had called Millionaire Oysters. And let me tell you, this was a delicious combination. Everything paired together really well. And it's definitely one that if I was having like a party or wanted to impress people, I'd be putting this one out there because it was a good, good combination. Maybe a little bit of hot sauce would make it even a little better though. This next one might upset some of the seafood purists out there because I'm gonna go ahead and just put everything together. I used the salmon as kind of like the roll base. I picked some of the Jonah crab meat, put some of the caviar on top of that. Then, of course, you got to add some of that salmon pate on top of there. And then add to that a freshly shucked Wellfleet oyster. I mean, honestly, I don't know what I'm doing here, but I think this is going to taste good. I'm kind of curious how the oyster is going to taste inside of there. There's a lot of different kind of almost like soft textures in there. And I'm not sure how much I'm going to like it. Maybe I should have put some cucumber or something like that in there. It actually rolled really easily and stayed together really well. I went ahead, gave this a bite, and... It's exactly what I thought. It was absolutely delicious. I do think some like cucumber or something like that would go a long way, but this is something that I'll be definitely making again in the future. Now I'm kind of getting down to the end of the ideas and I'm about to run out of oysters. So this next one is gonna be one that I thought would go really well together. I'm gonna do caviar, a little bit of crab and some of the mignonette. Now I think the crab and the mignonette are gonna go really well together. And I think the oyster and the mignonette go really well together, but I'm not sure how the vinegar is gonna do with the caviar. I don't know if it's gonna make it taste different or what. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a try either way here. So put the crab meat on there, a good amount of that caviar, and then just a little bit of the mignonette sauce not to overpower it. I gave this one a taste and I gotta say, and I gotta say, I actually like this combination. It was good because the crab and the oyster and the vinegar pair well together and the smokiness of the caviar that was on top of there with the salt too, really actually made a good combination. Now, last but not least, I'm just gonna put every single thing on top of this oyster right now. That's right, I'm gonna shock this oyster and put every single ingredient that I got with the raw bar on top of this oyster. Now, I'm not too sure this is gonna taste good because I think a lot of those ingredients are actually gonna fight with each other. Like both mini net sauces on the oyster, ginger and horseradish, and then just the regular stuff, I think are gonna fight right away. And then add some salmon and some pate and some caviar. Like I just not sure how this is all gonna work out. But I'm willing to try it out just like the time that I mixed all the different Slurpee flavors at the 7-Eleven and still had to drink that mistake. So I went ahead, got everything loaded up on there, gave it a taste, and just like I expected, there was way too many flavors on this. There was a ton of vinegar from the mignonette sauce. The smoked salmon really overpowered a it a lot. Same with the cream cheese from the salmon pate. I don't think I'm making that combination again.